Hey, good morning. It's springtime, and springtime usually in the education world means we start working with fractions, okay? Uh, today I got a quick tip to share with the parents about how to help your children as they're working with making equivalent fractions and they start working with how to convert fractions. They'll maybe make it a little easier at home and help them develop some kind of concrete sense of what we really mean. And it's making a cool little flip book. Okay. Now this can be done with alternating color sheets of paper, it can be done with sheets of paper that you color with highlighters or different colors and turn into coloring activity as well. It's a great rainy Sunday activity to make that they can stick in their binder, they can stick down their backpack. Whenever they're in math class and need it, they can pull it out and use it. It's actually a really simple procedure and I've got mine set up where I can display wholes, halves, fourths, eighths, and then sixteenths. The most difficult part about this is making sure that you don't accidentally cut through the next level above you. Uh, I also like this flip book as opposed to using uh, online manipulatives or things like that because our students, at, especially at young ages in third and fourth grade, when we start working with fractions, really need something hands-on still. And t teachers from time to time, we forget that because we're so worried about what the end result is and using the algorithm. It's still great to use some kind of hands-on manipulative, and I use it with my fifth graders too. Uh, I also like this flip book, because if you do it the right way after I show it to you, it's gonna give you a second set behind there to make a second to make a second chart for thirds, sixes, and ninths, and twelfths, okay? So, pretty easy. All you do first, take some random sheets of paper that you got in different colors. Give yourself about, you know, inch, quarter inch, and stagger them. Now what's going to happen is if you choose the right size paper, like I did not, on the other side it's going to flip down like this and you're going to have the same color. Okay. After you get the net number of sheets of paper that you want, it could be as simple as doing um, halves and fourths for first grade and second grade, or it could be all the way up to sixteenths, maybe even thirty seconds for fifth graders. Okay. Just take it and then flip it so the outside color is showing. Use your stapler. I guess you could use hot glue or glue, but that'd make it messy. Staple it in half across the top. And then all you have to do is cut. Now mine's messy because I'm hurrying. Um, your top bar is your one hole. And then after that, it's just thinking to myself, okay, I want this to be one hole. I want this to be uh, thirds. And I want this to be sixes. And that's what I'm doing this time. So. Now, I usually teach my kids that mathematics is really about precision, and I get them to focus on precision. But this is concrete, visual math. I don't get too much of a stickler about making sure I'm exactly one-third of my fraction bars. Part of that is, is because later on, as a fifth grade teacher, what I teach my kids is one of the reasons that we can't model it and draw pictures all the time is because drawing isn't necessarily the most accurate and effective way to do it. And as we start to transition from concrete models to actual algorithms, what we call the old school way, um, they're going to need to understand why you don't always want to draw a bar graph model or a circle graph model for yourself. So I've gone ahead and cut my one thirds. Now this is the hard part and I screwed up like four times trying to make this model for the video. Now I want to cut this into sixes. Well, um, sixes really just take one thirds and split it each one in half. So I got to make sure that I don't cut through my third and then I cut each one half and sixes. Again, I'm not being super concerned about about making sure it's exact because I just wanted them to understand that here a one hole is made up of three thirds. I have six parts that make up two parts that make up each third, so four parts that make up two thirds and six parts that make up three thirds. Now if I really wanted to I could for my younger kids, I can say I got a second grader or first grader. Now I can do a whole, halves, and fourths. That way they can compare those two. And then they can even use it to try to manipulate it to compare, well, what does one fourth look like compared to one third? Okay. You can make multiple flip books. Like I said, it's a great Saturday activity. Uh, if your children are struggling in fractions, this is something I really recommend. Okay.